All right, so it is uh, snowing outside. I intended on doing a different topic for this video, which would be, I think we're on step six, making beehives. Uh, the topic was going to be sourcing your lumber. We have a special guest lined up for that one. Um, but it's snowing, he's not gonna drive in the snow, so we're gonna, um, good for him. Um, we're gonna talk about sawing techniques and grain orientation. Um, so for those who really care about making a good product, right, this stuff matters. Um, the first thing I'm going to talk about is the difference between sawing technique and a grain orientation. And the reason I say the difference between the two is because they're commonly confused. Uh, people say, well, you know, it's quarter sawn lumber, whereas quarter sawn lumber is not a type of lumber that is a sawing technique, whereas edge grained lumber is a type of lumber. That's what quarter sawn lumber is. Um, so we're going to talk about the difference of those two. A sawing technique is the method of um, sawing the log, pulling boards out of that log, whereas grain orientation is the orientation that the grains are uh, relative to the flat side of the board that you pull out. Um, so Two basic types of milling. I have notes to try and keep up with my brain here. Um, two basic types of milling here that we're going to be talking about is uh, through sawn and grade sawn. Now, through sawn is the most commonly used, right? And what through sawing is, is you have your log, and typically, right, you're going to pull your cant out of that log, and then you're just going to slab boards out of it, right? You're just through sawing. Now, you can change the way that you through saw your lumber in order to get different dimensions of lumber, but you are not changing the way you're doing it in order to get specific grain orientations. Um, and then a different, right, and there's through sawn, and then you also have grade sawn. Now, grade sawn is where you're going to pull that cant out, and you are going to turn that log or cant in order to get the specific grain orientation that you want out of that um, log for your final board. Um, so there's different subcategories of grain sawing. You have uh, rift sawing, quarter sawing, and flat sawing. Um, so to start with flat sawing, a flat sawing board is exactly what it sounds like. Um, it's where you have your cant, and let's say you'll take a couple of boards off the top here, and then you're going to rotate it, and you're going to take a couple of boards off the top here, and you're going to rotate it, and you're going to take a couple boards off, and you can continue doing that in order to achieve a um, flat grain orientation in your lumber at the end. So that is a uh, flat sawing. And then you have rift sawing, which is where you have your pith here, you have your growth rings. Right? And you're going to rift saw that log in order to get edge grained uh, boards, right? Where you're going to have that grain between uh, 60 and 90 degrees of the flat side of your board. So this is rift sawing in order to get edge grained. And don't forget, edge grained is, is commonly referred to as quarter saw lumber. So that is your rift sawing, and then you have quarter sawing, which is a technique, not a type of lumber. The quarter sawing is exactly what it sounds like. It's where you quarter your log, and then working on each individual quarter, you start pulling your boards out by rotating that quarter again and again to make sure that you're getting the most boards with that 60 to 90 degree grain orientation. Um, so that's your three, that's some, some basic types, right, of uh, grade sawing is rift sawing, quarter sawing, and flat sawing. Um, for those that want to know, rift sawing results in the highest quality edge grain lumber. Uh, quarter sawing is a little bit easier and it makes some good edge grain lumber, but um, towards the edges of your board, you'll start, it'll, it'll start getting a little bit uh, 
Rifty, um, which we'll talk about soon. Um, so now, as far as the grain orientation, let me erase this one real quick. Um, we're going to talk about cross-grained, flat-grained, uh, rift-grained, and edge-grained. Now we remember we talked about through sawing, which is the one over here where you're just making your cant and you're just slabbing wood out of it. That is typically going to result in cross-grained um, lumber. So cross-grained lumber is where you're going to have your board and the um, grains will deviate from a line parallel to the sides of the boards, right? So um, that's a special way of saying that the grain just kind of runs whatever way it happens to run. So you could have your grain starting on this flat side and terminating on the same flat side. And then as you go, then eventually it starts, you know, starting on this flat side and terminating on this flat side. And the degree of that um, angle is going to change from being just about parallel with the flat side to being, you know, up to 60 degrees with the flat side. So that's going to be a cross grain board. So cross grain lumber um, is very, very common, but it is an un uh, undesirable grade. And that's because it tends to warp um, and change, twist, cup, all that stuff with moisture changes in the wood. Um, we are talking about all of this relative to beehives and beehives are outside, so the equilibrium moisture content of that board is going to continually fluctuate, but we're gonna talk about moisture content in a later video. Um, so typically, the wider the board, the higher the likelihood that you're gonna get cross-grain lumber, right? If you, are, if you are grade sawing your log in order to get a flat grain board, um, you start getting wider and wider boards, that's, that becomes more and more difficult. Um, but it does become easier the bigger the log is, right? The bigger the log, it's just like anything, right? If you take a small circle and a big circle and you slice off a little chunk of that, right? Three inches of that compared to three inches of this, this circle will appear flatter because of the um, circumference being bigger, right? So it just makes sense. Um, so that is uh, cross-grained. Uh, high bodies are almost always cross-grained lumber. We'll talk about why that is later. It's not a good thing, but it certainly is not a bad thing. Um, then you have uh, flat-grained. So here's our cross-grained. Now flat-grained is where you have your board. And your grain is typically below... 30 degrees relative to the um, flat portion, um, it's almost parallel, right? I, parallel is your goal in uh, flat grained uh, lumber. Um, larger logs is easier to make the most truly flat grained lumber, which we just talked about. Um, and the wider the board, the more likely it is that you'll end up with some, um, some type of cross grain in that board. Um, then you have uh, rift grain. So rift grain is where your grain orientation is kind of like that, like diagonal. It's between about 30 and 60 degrees relative to the flat side of your board. And then you have edge grain lumber, which again, to really repeat it, is um, the grade of the board, or not the grade of the board, but the orientation of the grain in the board, not a uh, milling technique whereas quarter sawn is a milling technique. So that is where your grain is near vertical, right? Between 60 and 90 degrees of the flat side of your board. So you have cross grained, flat grained, rift grained, and uh, edge grained. Um, commonly called quarter sawn. Typically, quarter sawn is always thought of, you know, that is like, like the highest quality wood. Um, but everything is relative to what you're doing, right? So there are instances where a 
flat grain board is going to serve you better than a quarter sun or edge grain board. Um, so it, it's important to, to make that distinction. It's just like with beehives, right, and different joinery, right? People talk about, you know, you have a dovetail versus a box joint versus a rabbit and all this stuff. And, you know, dovetail people associate with strength and quality, but, well, when you put it in a beehive box, it's a very poor, poor choice of joinery. So, especially the half-hidden dovetails. So it's important to understand that, you know, like the, the, the common assumptions that, you know, quarter saw lumber is inherently better. Well, no, it's inherent. It's better for certain instances. Um, sorry for that sidebar there. Um, but here, uh, so how does this relate to making beehives? Um, if you care about making beehives, right, and you're passionate about it, it, it relates. It's very, it relates a lot, right? Um, on that note, though, if you go to places all around the world, right, people keep beehives in boxes made of pallet wood, and uh, bees will be fine, right? <laughs> Um, the hive may not last as long as others, right? But it's not going to really affect the health of the bees unless you got this giant punky holy thing that gets robbed out all the time. Um, so in my, you know, path as far as making beehives and learning about it and just really, you know, trying to make the best product I can, I've found that different parts of the beehive require different sawing techniques in order to meet the design requirements of that part. Um, so to start with um, a hive body, right? Um, like I said earlier, the grain orientation of a hive body is almost always uh, cross-grained, right? Where you just have whatever that grain orientation is, which is the poorest quality um, grain orientation is that there is. And since a hive body is outside, it's going to result in, um, you know, equilibrium moisture content changes. Um, so here's the other part with your hive bodies. Is in my opinion, there are different portions of your hive body that benefit from one grain orientation versus another. That being where... The bottom portion of your hive body, realistically, I think would be best being an edge grained piece of lumber, right? It's got that, it's got that stability for those moisture content changes. Um, but as you come up here to the top, where your uh, rabbit portion of your box is, your frame rest, if this is edge grained, um, I think that would result in an inferior portion for that hive body. And the reason for that is because uh, high bodies are made out of softwood, right? Uh, eastern white pine, ponderosa pine, yellow pine, all of the all of the pine lumbers split easily along the grain lines. So if you have your rabbited area uh, in a um, edge grain orientation, that rabbit can snap off far easier than a plain grain uh, or a flat grain orientation. So typically, right, and like in a perfect world, you know, you're like, all right, well, I want. I want edge grain down here, and then I want uh, flat grain up here. Um, which is not an achievable, realistic goal for making high bodies. You're not going not gonna to be able to do it, right? Um, sourcing your lumber, and especially if you want to make any sort of profit off of it, it's just a, it's an unrealistic goal. So the thing that I found, the best method, is to simply do uh, quality control and just flip the board as you go and you're making your high body. I mean, it's, it's pretty easy, right? You have your board and you can have a top and a bottom, right? There's only two ways to do it. And so with practice, things become more routine and you stop having to think about it. Every time I, I do it before I put my handles on, right? That's, that's when I'm figuring out which the top side of this high body and uh, which is the bottom. Um, I look at it and I say, all right, well, you know, this grain orientation, this side should be the top. And then I stack them all in a pile with all the tops facing the same way, put my handle on, and then I never have to think about it again. Sounds like it takes a lot of effort. Um, it doesn't. You get used to it and it becomes just second nature. Um, so that's your high bodies. Now, this is where I think... Uh, 
uh, grain orientation becomes very important in your beehive. And uh, the first one is your top bars, right? So top bars is a very, very easy one. There's really typically one failure for top bars. And that is your ear breaking off where you have your top bar tenon, right? It's a weak spot. Constantly grinding it out, propolis, right? And it breaks. So that's your common failure point. And it's very, very easy to make a top bar, if you care to, that will be more resistant to that failure. Right? And you don't need to look any further than if you're shopping for an axe handle or a hammer handle. Right? So if you're shopping for an axe handle, this is your handle, right? And obviously the wide part is up and down. You see, you go to the store and you look down and you find an axe handle like this, or an axe handle like this, well, which one are you going to buy? You're going to buy this one, because that is a stronger handle, right? Your grain is not going to be oriented with the force being applied to that axe handle, which is going to make this one split faster and easier than this one. Um, this one might be a, it'll be a little bit softer on your hands as far as vibration, because it will absorb some impact, but we're going for durability, right? So it's the same exact concept with your top bars. Right? You want your top bar, I'm just going to make it an easy square. You want your top bar with those grains running in an edge grained fashion, not in a flat grain fashion. Stronger, weaker, relative to that specific um, piece of your beehive. So, I don't, well, personally, I don't know anybody that actually um, does this other than me, but typically, right, so there's um, two different techniques that you can use in order to get an edge grain board or an edge grain, grain orientation in your top bar. Um, you can either rip saw for three quarter inch boards or you can flat saw for one inch boards. Um, I find that flat sawing for one inch boards works better for me. And the reason for that is my top bars come out of the clearest, best logs that I have, right? And as that log is going through its life or the tree is going through its life, the inner part of that log is going to have those knots in it. And then as that tree matures and that portion of the log becomes a trunk, Right, those knots go away and you start getting this clear lumber, right? So if your quarter sawing or rift sawing, part of that board is going to be is going to encompass the middle of that log where you're going to have knots in it. Whereas if you're flat sawing um, that board, you're going to be pulling your boards out of the outside and you'll have the most clear lumber that you can get and then still have that flat grain orientation. So that's the method that I like to use in order to get the right grain orientation in my top bars. I flat saw them for a one inch final board thickness and then um, when I rip that down into three quarters that flips my grain and my marker right out of my fucking hand. Um, it flips my grain to the right direction. We're going to change to red now. markers around. Um, all right, so end bars. Um, an end bar is going to have two different um, causes of failure. The first is going to be during assembly, and this is a user error based failure most of the time, but the grain orientation can make it more difficult or easier to have that user error. And that user error is when you nail it or staple it and the staple or nail comes out the side of your uh, end bar. Um, now if you have a grain orientation like this or like this, right? so this is your edge grain orientation and your flat grain orientation and you are driving nails down into here, 
into your end bar, this grain orientation will help keep that nail straight, where this one will not provide any resistance to it um, jutting out the side. Very, very minor thing, um, but it happens to coincide with the second um, uh, more important type of failure in an end bar, and that is your um, shoulder splitting off, right? So um, end bars today, they're all Hoffman style, right? Where you have the spacer built right into the end bar. And the common failure point, like I just said, is the shoulder splitting off. Um, so there's been methods to remedy this. Um, you have the Vogler end bars, which is where you have a V on one side of your end bar, right? And that's uh, going to be pretty hard to draw. There, there's your V. Um, and I think it's pretty, pretty cool, but um, you can't find them. Nobody makes them. And from my understanding, the reason for that is basically because user error when people were assembling their frame. Um, you wanted one part of that V on this side of the frame and the other part of the V on the other side. So you hold the frame in your hand, the V's touching one thumb, but touching the fingers on the other side. If you don't have it in that orientation, then the two V's can meet up and then your frames can um, kind of get sidetracked next to each other and it'll interfere with um, extraction and um, spacing within the hive and things like that. Uh, sidebar, side tangent. And then you also had the uh, Simmons frame staples, which again, very cool. Don't know, I, I probably cost related on why they're not used, but you have your end bar. And your top bar is in there, obviously, in the Simmons frame staples, right? It has an upward hook on the staple end there. It wraps around your shoulder and comes up and over and then hooks down into your top bar. It's flat, doesn't stick up over the top bar. Um, and so that, right, that, that's a, a piece of metal on the staple kind of really encompassing and, and holding on snugly to that shoulder, which will help keep it from... Uh, breaking off and then it'll also provide I mean, really good pull apart resistance but I, I, I've never seen them made I, I, I'm too young to have ever seen them in production and they're not used for a reason I'd imagine it's cost um, so that leaves you with what method for um, trying to get your end bar shoulders to uh, split less split less so the method that I use is selecting proper grain orientation um, and that grain orientation, as you could have guessed, is going to be flat grain orientation. Your pulling forces are going in this direction. And you have a softwood that splits easily along your grain lines. Well, this is weak and this is not. I have data to back this up. I've done tests. Um, so you want to have in your final end bar a flat grain orientation not an edge grain orientation um, if you look at end bars across um, the board you're going to find a lot of this um, it's cost you have to right um, you have to grade saw on your lumber in order to get what you want so how do you get a flat sawn end bar well there's uh, two ways you can either go for a flat grain lumber with a final thickness of 3 8 right off of your log that's not an achievable, realistic thing. 3 8 is just way too thin. You're never going to get it to dry uh, properly without drying defects. So that leaves you with um, having to do uh, cross grain orientation on a thicker board and ripping that board um, down into 3 8 pieces. So let's say this is our cross grain, or our, um, our end grained um, board, not cross grain. That's not mistake to say. So this is your end grain board that you're pulling off of your log and then you are going to be ripping your um, 3 8 pieces off of it right in uh, this direction which then rotates them so that you have a flat sawn um, edge bar. And that's, there's more grain lines than that but trust me it works. So that is um, going to force the, the wood to fail through type, um, tearing the wood fibers versus splitting at the end grain.
or at the green. Um, and it does result in a significantly stronger end bar. And then as far as the rest of the beehive is concerned, you have your bottom bars, right? Inner cover frames, outer cover frames, migratory covers, all of this. And I've looked at grain orientation. And in my opinion, at this moment, um, I don't think that the benefits of flipping the grain in any one way or another for all those parts results in something that outweighs the cost, right? The benefit doesn't outweigh the cost. Um, so with all your bottom boards and inner covers and outer covers and stuff, you're going to use what lumber you have that happens to fit the bill, the things that you're going to be looking for for your selection criteria, excuse me, it's going to be your, um, right, selecting for sapwood versus heartwood and um, developing your uh, hive producing process to where you are selecting knots out of the um, lumber gradually, right? That's, of course, just something that you're going to get in the habit of doing. Right, you make the high body and you're just continually pushing those knots out. Um, and uh, that's it. So I don't think this was too bad of a video as far as time. I hope not. It didn't feel like a long time. Uh, so we talked about sawing techniques and grain orientation. Um, how it can be applied to different parts of the beehives. And with everything, I reserve the right to be wrong because I am constantly learning. Uh, hopefully, I'll go back in like five years and I'll look at this video and be like, nope, that was wrong, that was wrong, or have something to add. Well, I hope I'm not wrong, but hopefully I have something to add. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask, right? I'd be happy to answer them. Um, it's going to be up to you to figure out whether I'm bullshitting my way through the answer. Um, just kidding. That's not going to be hard because I'm always bullshitting. Um, but that's it. Um, hope you enjoyed the video.